a charming landscape, or instead a scene of greenhouse gas production causing global warming? There are 280 million dairy cows across all continents. Many are in advanced technology production centers. Here, for instance, cows in a mid-sized German company are on their way to high-tech milking machines. There are 133 million well-qualified dairy farmers around the world. They ensure that cattle farming makes an important contribution to feeding our global population, nearly 8 billion people, with valuable meat and dairy products. Long shelves in supermarkets are filled with milk and hundreds of dairy products. Cheese, for instance, comes in so many varieties from all continents and for thousands of years. Chinese ice cream, following a 1,400-year-old recipe. An Ethiopian butter gourd. And what would an Indian marketplace be without delicious Lassi yogurt? Cows coming home in Germany. Animals and people in a cultural and nutritional symbiosis. Should all this age-old cultural wisdom now be called into question because the cows are being made responsible for climate change? Children drinking milk in school. Milk plays such an important role in nutrition that in 2001, the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, introduced the World School Milk Day. More than 40 countries participate. At McMaster University in Canada, Professor Andrew Mente is researching the health benefits of milk consumption. The globally organized PURE research project involves 135,000 people from all socio-cultural backgrounds of the world. Its results are clear. So higher dairy consumption, particularly whole fat dairy, is associated with a lower risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease, particularly a lower risk of stroke. Nonetheless, in Germany, the public TV stations ARD and ZDF warn against milk because of climate change. Here excerpts made for a target group of 14 to 29 year olds. Milk has a relevant impact on our climate. Even though the CO2 emissions of dairy production have decreased since 1990, the dairy industry is still responsible for 3% of all global greenhouse gas emissions, more than all the airplanes in the world. Plenty of milk means many cows. And those cows are heating up the climate of our planet, so we are told. The cows emit lots of methane, and that methane is hurting our climate. There is an increasing amount of discussion on how we can reduce our meat and milk consumption. Meat and milk taxes are considered, or even bans are requested. But how are cows and climate really related? The satellite pictures of the European Space Agency, ESA, help to find answers. They show where there is methane in the atmosphere. Red is more, blue is less methane. Leaky gas pipelines in Russia are easy to spot. And in China, a lot of coal and oil is burned, causing methane emissions. However, in Brazil, where 212 million animals amount to the largest cattle herd in the world, there are no heightened methane concentrations visible from space. The same is true for Ethiopia and Sudan, where a total of 96 million cattle are kept, more than all of the European Union. But regardless of where they are in the world, cows are part of an air, soil, grass animal system. To understand the system, it is necessary to study the related physical, chemical, and biological processes. A natural part of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide, CO2, consisting of one carbon and two oxygen atoms. 
its share of the atmosphere is 0.04%. All plants, including grasses, depend on this CO2 for their growth and take it from the air. From the soil, the plants take water, H2O, consisting of two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms. From these, plants create long carbon chains. Through reactions with other elements, these become sugars, fats, and proteins. Ruminants, for instance cows, eat these grasses and so take in the sugars, fats, and proteins. And with them, they produce the milk in their udders. Humans eat these carbon chains in the form of milk and dairy products. Together with oxygen from the air, the carbon is burned in the body cells. This process results in CO2. Up to two tons are exhaled per person per year. Thus, the circle is closed. The CO2, which the grasses took from the air, was eaten by the cow, which made milk that humans drank, and then exhaled CO2 back into the air. This circle cannot possibly influence the climate or heat it up because no additional CO2 has been created. There are no doubts about the importance of livestock cattle for the nutrition of humans. The main food for cows are grasses, which are made of long and tough carbon chains, the cellulose. Grasses are completely indigestible for humans. Therefore, there is no competition for food between cattle herds and humans. Research conducted by FAO shows that only 14% of the feed of all livestock would be suitable for human consumption. The cattle herds ensure that these otherwise useless agri-resources become valuable to people in form of nutritious meat and healthy dairy products. Cows turn 20,000 kilograms of feed into 10,000 kilograms of nutritious milk. This shows that dairy production is one of the most efficient methods of producing human food. That is why there are so many cows around the world. It also shows that the elimination of livestock cattle would lead to a gigantic hunger and malnutrition crisis on all continents. So that ruminants, for instance cows, can digest grasses, they have an organ which humans do not have. The rumen. It is about as large as a bathtub. Inside the rumen, bacteria feed on the cellulose of the grasses and break it down into easily digestible components. These bacteria use a different chemical process from animals. They do not produce CO2 but CH4 also called methane. This CH4 is erupted through the mouth of the cow into the air. Around 120 kilograms of it per year per German dairy cow. Methane remains in the atmosphere for a short time period. Because methane might be absorbing more heat energy than CO2, some climate scientists believe it causes damage to the climate. Therefore, all livestock cattle are called into question. However, the question is, are these methane emissions a new phenomenon on our planet? Ruminants existed already before the Industrial Revolution since millions of years. All these ruminants have always emitted CH4 methane into the atmosphere. The question is, do we nowadays have more ruminants on the planet because of these domestic cattle herds and therefore, we have more methane emissions compared to before the Industrial Revolution. We do not know how many ruminants lived on Earth in earlier times. Nobody counted them 300 years ago. But there must have been billions of animals grazing the vast and empty savannas and prairies of Africa and Asia. We do know with reasonable certainty that there were about as many wild bison and moose on the American prairies as there are domesticated cattle today. 
It is estimated that 500 years ago, there were 26 million elephants in Africa, down to just 100,000 today. These elephants emitted about as much methane back in their day as the entire current dairy cow herd in Europe. If the pre-industrial wild large animal herds did not heat up the planet over millions of years, then today's roughly equally large domesticated herds cannot do so either. Cattle and ruminants cannot be made responsible for human-made climate change. All of this does not yet explain the satellite pictures, where, for instance, in Brazil, there is little methane, yet there are large herds of cattle. One possible explanation? As ruminants graze the soils, they stimulate bacteria that feed on methane and promote a rich biodiversity in the soil. The soil can then sequester more carbon and water. The soils absorb part of the methane emissions of the cows. The soil bacteria depend on this methane and turn it into nutrients. The dimensions of all these effects are not yet known. The complicated processes of the air, soil, grass, animal system are only poorly understood. Even the globally renowned Global Carbon Project is still working intensively to understand the methane cycle. Also, the IPCC does not know yet. So far, the most comprehensive report on the impact of agriculture on climate, released on the 9th of August 2019, remains vague. It takes effort to study all the 829 pages of the IPCC report. On page 489, I found the following passage. However, analyzing ruminant meat production is highly complex because of the extreme heterogeneity of production systems and due to the numerous products and services associated with ruminants. Therefore, according to the IPCC report, a reduction of ruminant consumption cannot be easily recommended. It is a mystery how the anti-milk and anti-meat activists can be so absolutely certain that it is necessary to reduce milk and meat consumption in order to save the climate. At least the IPCC cannot be their source. There is no justification to call into question a deeply anchored symbiosis of human civilization and livestock cattle, neither in Germany nor anywhere else in the world. We can be absolutely certain. Milk and dairy products are superbly healthy. You may enjoy this age-old cultural good and natural food with a clear conscience. <laughs>